Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel Biodiversity and Conservation. I am Subhalakshmi Rao from Ambika Prashad Research Foundation, Odisha, India. And uh, today we are going to discuss on uh, GPCR, that is uh, G protein coupled receptor and their signaling. So let's start. So what is GPCR, G protein coupled receptor? But before going to that, we can sum up that there are actually two types of receptors that are intracellular receptors and cell surface receptors. Intracellular receptors include the cytosolic and nuclear receptors. And in nuclear receptors, we studied about steroid and thyroid hormone. And uh, now we will uh, discuss about the cell surface receptors in which uh, there are mainly three types of receptors that is uh, uh, G protein coupled uh, receptor, and channel receptors and uh, enzyme linked uh, receptors uh, out of which um, today we will solely focus on uh, GPCR that is G protein coupled receptor. They are the largest family of uh, cell surface receptors uh, that transmit signals uh, to intracellular targets via the G proteins. Uh, they are present in all the eukaryotic cells and uh, they include the receptors um, for many neurotransmitters, neuropeptides and peptide hormones. Um, the GPCR family includes a large number of uh, receptors that are responsible for uh, smell, light and taste. And um, why uh, they are uh, called uh, sometimes serpentine receptors? Because they cross the lipid bilayer seven times. So they are uh, sometimes also called serpentine receptors and uh, in the G protein uh, linked receptors we also have uh, eight helix that is alpha helix here in the diagram you can see that uh, um, the G protein receptor uh, loops in the um, lipid bilayer seven times forming three extracellular loops and uh, three intracellular loop in which the third intracellular loop is uh, slightly larger than others and uh, we have the N terminal towards the extracellular fluid and the C terminal that is COH, uh, CO minus or COH N um, inside the cell that is its uh, cytosolic uh, terminal now we said that uh, uh, they transfer the signals via G protein, the G uh, PCRs. So now we will discuss about G protein. G protein are uh, generally called GTPase uh, switch proteins, and uh, they are also known as guanine nucleotide binding proteins. And they are a family of proteins that acts as molecular switch. The molecular switch means it um, turns off and on and uh, act in the molecular processes and belong to a larger group of enzymes called GT pages. GT pages, as we know, they break, break down GTP into GDP plus inorganic phosphate. So they are specialized uh, proteins with the ability to bind uh, the nucleotides GTP and GDP. And there are uh, two classes of GTP switch proteins that is uh, trimeric G proteins and monomeric uh, G proteins. Uh, out of which uh, the trimeric uh, G proteins uh, uh, have the ability to bind with the GPCRs and um, the GPCR have uh, um, three subunit, um, an alpha subunit, a beta subunit, and a gamma subunit. And 
these proteins the g proteins are uh, turned on when uh, they bound to gtp and turned off when they bound to gdp in absence of a signal the g protein is uh, bound to gdp um, and when the signals they get the signals uh, um, the signals activate the release of uh, uh, gdp and uh, there is a subsequent binding of gtp um, over gdp because of the high concentration in the intracellular fluid the gdp gtp gets bind uh, with uh, g protein and uh, this um, gives us the cascade reactions uh, that is activating the uh, inactive enzyme and after the enzyme gets activated it takes part in various cell processes metabolic processes of our cell now what is the action of g protein generally um, when the g protein is uh, bound with gdp it remains in uh, inactive form and when the ligand binds with the gpcr that is g protein coupled receptor it uh, gets the signal to activate itself so after uh, getting the signal um, there is uh, activation of uh, gtp that is the gdp is converted into gtp then gtp binds with the um, g protein that is uh, um, that is generally um, in inactive form and gets activated after uh, activating it uh, gives out the signal uh, to carry out the processes of cell and uh, after uh, the work is done it can um, automatically get switched off by um, the increase in the amount of uh, um, gtp that is uh, self uh, inhibitory and there uh, the gtp gets hydrolyzed uh, into gdp and inorganic phosphate where the gdp amount increases in the intracellular fluid which uh, um, gets attached to then the g protein making them inactive so by this way the there is a termination of um, uh, the signal processing and um, here in the diagram it shows uh, all these processes here um, we can see that uh, the activation of an individual G protein may cause activation or inhibition of a particular effector and um, the major effector proteins of uh, G proteins are adenylate cyclases, phospholipid C, beta, CGMP specific phosphodiesterase GEF of the monomeric G protein rho, beta adrogenic receptor kinase, um, PI3 cape kinase. So all these are the effector proteins of G proteins. And um, here when the GPCR undergo conformational change after binding with the ligand, uh, the G alpha subunit exchanges uh, GDP for GDP and gets activated by binding to the GDP, uh, which activates uh, the enzyme uh, adene adenylyl cyclase that converts ATP to uh, cyclic AMP, that is a secondary messenger, uh, which carries out the information to the inactive uh, PKA. It is uh, protein kinase A. The elevated CAMP uh, levels uh, activate the protein kinase A. Uh, and after activation, um, there is uh, binding of cyclic AMP to the regulatory subunits, um, which alters their conformation, causing them to 
uh, dissociate from the complex the complex which has uh, uh, two catalytic subunits and two regulatory subunits um, the released catalytic subunits are activated to phosphorylate specific substrate proteins and the active catalytic subunits phosphorylate a number of target proteins um, cytosolic as well as uh, nuclear uh, target proteins on serine and threonine residues and um, and then we get uh, all the down, downstream processes uh, may it be in uh, the in case of transcription or other uh, metabolic processes of the cell Uh, generally, G proteins are attached to the cytoplasmic phase of the plasma membrane and the ligand binds to the GPCR um, which leads to the activation of the associated signal transducing G protein. All the G proteins uh, generally consist of three subunits, alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha and gamma subunits of the G protein are anchored to the membrane uh, lipids covalently and the beta subunit is always uh, in, in grouped with the uh, alpha subunit forming a heterodimeric structure uh, G beta gamma and the alpha subunit is a GTPase switch protein that alternates between an active state with bound GTP and in uh, and an inactive state with bound GDP. So um, binding of the trimeric G protein to an activated receptor leads to dissociation of uh, GDP, binding of GDP to G alpha and dissociation of uh, G alpha G uh, GTP from uh, G beta gamma. Then the GTPase activity of um, um, G alpha determines the length of time that the signal remains on. G alpha GDP then dissociates from its effector and reassociates with the G beta gamma. So all these processes carry on, but as I said, it has a built in mechanism for signal uh, termination. Within a short time, the G alpha subunit undergoes auto inactivation due to the GTPase activity. Uh, and in many cases, the protein termed as RGS, regulator of G protein signaling, accelerates uh, GTP hydrolysis by the G alpha subunit. Thus, the RGS proteins act as alpha subunit specific GTPase activating proteins, that is, GAPs. And the uh, alpha subunit defines the basic pro properties of a heteromeric G protein. Um, and uh, in this diagram, we can see that um, after the ligand binds with the G protein coupled receptor, um, it activates uh, the G protein where. Uh, the uh, G alpha subunit leaves GDP and binds with GTP and uh, it carries on uh, to transfer the uh, signals to the enzyme where uh, it activates the enzyme and uh, helps it to go through the downstream sig signaling which involves ion channels, um, either inhibition of uh, CAMP or phospholipages, which um, takes part in the cell motility. And in some cases, like in G alpha S, uh, it increases the CAMP levels. Um, uh, GS alpha subunit actually activates the effector adenylate cyclase. Um, and it's called a stimulatory G protein. The GS alpha subunit binds uh, uh, and hydrolyzes GTP and activates uh, plasma membrane bound enzyme 
adenylate uh, late um, cyclase and uh, adenylate cyclase is a large multiplast transmembrane protein which uh, with its catalytic domain on the cytosolic side of the plasma membrane the activator does adenylate cyclase synthesizes CAMP from ATP and the CAMP directly activates the CAMP dependent protein kinase that is uh, protein kinase A, PKA. It uh, also induces opening of certain types of ion channels in the plasma membrane of some highly specialized cells and uh, it catalyzes uh, uh, the uh, transfer of terminal uh, phosphate group from ATP to specific uh, um, target proteins thereby regulating their activity. In the inactive state PKA consists of a complex of two catalytic subunits and two regulatory subunits that we discussed earlier. Um, after the binding of CAMP to the regulatory subunit uh, there is uh, a cascade reaction um, where it uh, where the catalytic uh, subunits uh, act, uh, activated uh, to phosphorylate specific substrate uh, protein molecules and uh, one of the major nuclear targets of PKA is the transcription factor CREB that is CAMP response element binding protein which is activated by phosphorylation and uh, phosphorylation at a single uh, serine residue greatly increases the activity of CREB bound to the um, CAMP response element that is uh, CRE which is found in genes uh, whose transcription is induced by CAMP. The many G protein coupled receptors exert their effects via G proteins like GQ that activate um, uh, the plasma membrane bound enzyme phospholipase C beta that is PLC beta and um, all of these PLCs require the presence of calcium ion for the enzymatic activity. The activated uh, phospholipase C cleaves uh, phosphatidyl inositol uh, 4 5 bisphosphate, that is PIP2, um, to generate two secondary messengers, that is inositol 145 triphosphate, that is IP3, and uh, diacylglycerol, that is DAG. The membrane phospholipid PIP2 is a minor component of plasma membrane. Uh, which is found in the inner leaflet of the lipid uh, bilayer, phospholipid bilayer. Uh, one secondary messenger dias, uh, DAG remains associated with uh, plasma membrane and the second uh, um, messenger produced uh, by PIP2 uh, cleavage that is IP3 is a small polar molecule that is released into the cytosol where it acts uh, to signal the release of calcium ion from the endoplasmic reticulum and um, IP3 acts uh, um, by um, acts um, to release the calcium ion from endoplasmic reticulum by binding to receptors that are uh, ligand-gated calcium ion channels. As a result, the cytosolic calcium ion levels increase, which affects the activities of a variety of target proteins, including protein kinases and phosphatases. Uh, DAG, together with uh, phosphatidylserine and calcium ion, helps the, uh, to activate the enzyme uh, protein kinase C, which is uh, recruited from the cytosol to the cytosolic uh, phase of plasma membrane. When activated, PKC phosphorylates uh, specific serine or thionine residues on target proteins. And um, the 
G proteins are uh, also used in um, vision also because vision depends on uh, G protein coupled receptors that uh, regulate the cyclic nucleotide gated ion channel. Um, here, when the light um, reaches uh, the pigment that is rhodopsin, it um, gets um, change that is there, there is a conformational change in rhodopsin which uh, causes activation of transducin which act, then activates phosphodiesterase uh, due to which uh, there is increase uh, decreased intracellular uh, cyclic gmp and which causes uh, closure of sodium ions uh, and channels and there is uh, then hyperpolarization of the cells and uh, there is a decreased release of uh, selective uh, transmitter so a number of uh, mechanisms operate in roads to allow the cells to revert quickly to a resting or dark state and um, the decrease of uh, calcium ion concentration um, stimulates guanyl cyclase to replenish the cyclic GMP, rapidly uh, returning its level to where it was before the light was switched on. A specific calcium ion sensitive protein mediates the activation of uh, guanyl uh, cyclase in response to a fall of uh, calcium ion levels. In contrast to calmodulin, uh, this protein is inactive when calcium ion is bound to it and active when it is uh, calcium ion free. And uh, there is uh, uh, presence of rhodopsin specific kinase, uh, serin kinase, which phosphorylates the cytosolic tail of activated. Uh, rhodopsin and partially inhibits the ability of rhodopsin to activate transducin an inhibitory protein called aristin then binds to the phosphorylated rhodopsin further inhibiting uh, rhodopsin's activity at the same time as rhodopsin is being shut off a regulator of g protein signaling that is rgf protein acts like GTPase activating protein binds to activated transducin and uh, stimulates uh, the transducin to uh, get um, uh, bound to GDP which returns transducin to its inactive state and um, there is also um, G proteins that, that helps in the regulation of ion channels uh, so a g protein called uh, g alpha 12 activates a guanine, a guanine nucleotide exchange factor gf that activates a monomeric gtpase of rho family which regulates the dynamics of actin's um, cytoskeleton and um, this uh, can be seen in case of uh, uh, cancer progression and uh, metastasis. So this uh, diagram actually shows every activity of uh, uh, G protein, how uh, when a ligand binds to GPCR, it activates G protein, which then activates enzyme phospholipase C, which uh, then uh, in the presence of PIP2 gives us DAG and gives us IP3. And the DAG from uh, which is uh, present in the inner leaflet of uh, plasma membrane, they all take part in the calcium calmodulin delay signaling um, and another is pkc um, how those uh, protein um, 
phosphorylate specific serine and thionine residues on target uh, proteins. So this is a summary. Now, as we know, when a signal is started and it works uh, out, signal is uh, given and the work is done, then the signal has to stop. So um, uh, there is a term called desensitization of uh, GPCRs. That is, we have to close off the uh, GPCR so that no uh, signal gets uh, conducted and the cell will not get rest. So the desensitization of the GPCR response can be described as a loss of response to prolonged or repeated stimulation. It starts with the phosphorylation of uh, several serine and thionine residues in the cytoplasmic domains of the receptor. And the receptor phosphorylation is catalyzed by a family of kinases called G-protein coupled receptor kinases. And that is uh, GRKs. The GRK phosphorylated uh, receptor then acts as a substrate for uh, binding of a family of proteins called arestins, which uh, uncouple the receptor and G protein. And uh, there are also other kinases, principally the second messenger dependent protein kinases. Uh, are also known to play a role in the desensitization of um, many GPCR responses. Uh, this uh, diagram actually shows how the activated uh, GPCR um, stimulates uh, GRK to phosphorylate the GPCR on multiple sites. And the GPCR kinase, that is GRK, that binds uh, to the phosphates of... Um, uh, sorry, the phosphorylated GPCR uh, and um, then desensitizes the GPCR, then the cell signaling will stop. So, this is all from me today. Thank you.